Booker Tov, Shalom everyone, Rabbi Eric Solomon, Raleigh, North Carolina. Good morning Torah in honor of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, coming up next week. Right now we're in the 10 days, the Aseret Yimei Tshuva, the 10 days of repentance, and all over the Jewish world we're thinking, hopefully, taking time. If not, it's a good chance to start. Um, to reflect on where we are in our lives, in our relationships with others, it's time for forgiveness and apologies, and also, ultimately, to come before God. And, um, you know, one of the things that I want to put out there is a beautiful modeling around this idea of forgiveness and each of us having apologies, confession. It's upon each of us. If you look in the roots of Yom Kippur in the Torah, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 16, that's the basis of what we have Yom Kippur today. Of course, it evolved over time, but the original uh, Leviticus, Vayikra 16, it's basically... You know, the high priest, who is considered symbolically the, the religious leader of the Jewish people, somebody's like the chief rabbi, um, going to the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, later the holy temple in Jerusalem, and cleansing, apologizing, confessing um, on behalf of the Jewish people for God, all. But what's powerful about it is if you look at the verses in the Torah, it's not just they the high priest is representing all of us, which is true, and offering uh, different goats, ones to Azazel. And you, know, you can look at the whole ritual. It's very powerful about kind of cleansing, forgiveness, starting again. But the high priest goes into the Holy of Holies, and it says, first, the high priest is supposed to ask for forgiveness from God, to apologize to God, to confess for his own sins, and then for his own household, before then he apologizes for, on behalf of the Jewish people. And we know from later commentary and explanation in the Talmud that the high priest would actually get down on the ground and prostrate himself, demonstrate intense humility. And the Talmud even tells us that originally around the temple, our people would surround and basically watch the whole day, watch the ritual of the high priest and the sacrifices that were done in honor of all that forgiveness, apologizing, etc. So what does that mean? Just to bring it back kind of psycho-spiritually, is that the most prominent person in society, or one of the most prominent, goes up in front of everyone, and basically they watch as he admits his mistakes. Not just on of the people, but personal mistakes. And apology. Now, some people say, well, that's no big deal. Of course, what he should do. But bring it now to, to us. I have met with many people in our shul, and in, in my job is as a rabbi, very privileged, um, where there are times where there are people in families or people in relationships who are embarrassed or afraid of letting their heart break open and admitting their mistakes. Not just because they're, it's hard to admit you something wrong or they don't wanna to apologize to someone else because it's just hard to get past your ego, that's all true. But I've had people say to me, you know, Rabbi, I would, I would like to, or I, I have a desire to honor and confess and really break down, even in shul, even in prayer. But when I do so, when I break down, there are people around me, my wife, my children, my grandchildren, that they get scared when they see me admitting my mistakes or admitting my sins or me getting emotional or me crying. I've had people say to me, especially at funerals, well, I don't wanna cry or break down because my children, this will upset my children too much. I understand, I get it. You don't, it's, it's not pleasant to upset people around you and there are people looking up to you and I get it. Or a teacher, I have to hold it together. I don't want my kids to see my struggle. Most of the time that is true. But on Yom Kippur, one day a year, and by the way, I say the same thing also at funerals for people, when it's their particular parents or siblings or God forbid children, when this is not a time, one day a year, or sadly in times of funerals, this is not a time to pre pretend to be strong for other people. This is a time to model for others that you're a human being with struggles and sins as well, and it's okay to break down. And let that be a modeling for people around you. Will it be hard for them? Of course. I remember the first time I really saw, well, when my grandfather died, may rest in peace, and my father broke down in tears, me and my sister. We were petrified, terrified. Very painful to see someone you admire and love to cry and break down. But they also modeled for me and my sister 
that they're human beings too. They have pain as well. They're struggling too. And that's a teaching as well. Even the strong one struggles also, is a human being. So to the high priest, high priest on Yom Kippur is not afraid to show the world that he's not perfect and that he's struggling with tears and prostration before God. So on this Yom Kippur, my intention for you, and for those of you that don't honor, celebrate Yom Kippur per se, but just in general in your life, in your spiritual life, that yes, as leaders, as parents, as grandparents, as spouses, partners, friends, we may be holding it together because we want to not upset others around us, coworkers. I get it. It's important. That's part of being an adult, is to be able to hold it together when others are struggling. Be leader of a military unit. You have to hold it together when others are going through challenge. But one day a year, the high priest was able to say, I break open my heart. I admit I'm a human being. I struggle too. I cry. I make mistakes. I sin. And that's a teaching as well. And so too upon us. One day a year, at least, it's okay to let your heart break. It's okay to let it go. And if the people around you can't handle that, maybe that's their problem. Because you have the right you have the need, you have the spiritual desire like every other human being to honor your soul's yearning, struggle, pain. And that's the only way you're gonna be able to go forward in the rest of the year and quote unquote, be strong for them is if at least one day a year, you can let it go. I pray for all of us as we find a way to let it go, to open up to God, the power beyond us where we've fallen and not feel we can't do that because the people around us won't let us do that. No, one day a year, they need to. Just like the high priest. Wish everyone a gamar chatimatova, a good ceiling, please God, in the book of life. Go, please, apologize, seek forgiveness when possible. And let your heart break this Yom Kippur. That's the point. Gamar tov. Shabbat shalom.